Metrics are data about the performance of your applications. By default, many AWS services provide free metrics for the resources. You can also publish application-specific metrics to the CloudWatch and view them in AWS Management Console. The PowerTools Lambda Metrics Library makes it easy to publish custom metrics from your Lambda functions. In this video, let's learn how to get started using the PowerTools Metrics Library from the Lambda function use that to provide custom metrics and how you can view them in the AWS Management Console. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. The PowerTool Metrics Library creates these metrics asynchronously by logging the metrics to the standard output which is the AWS CloudWatch. You can view these metrics data in different visualized form using the CloudWatch console. Now, some of the key features of the library include aggregating up to 100 metrics using a single CloudWatch object, validating your metrics, create the metrics asynchronously, which means it has least impact on your application code, and also it makes it very easy to get started using the metrics feature in CloudWatch. Now, before we go into the code and see how to implement this, let's understand a few key terminologies in the metrics space. You'll come across key terms like namespace, dimensions, metric, unit, and resolution. Now, namespace, like in programming, is a grouping container that can group multiple metrics from different services together. This will usually be at the application or at a project level for based on your requirements on viewing and categorizing these metrics in your organization. Now there's also dimensions, which is basically a key value format, which helps you to slice and dice the metrics visualization. Now the metric is the name of the metric, such as successful booking, payment received, etc. Unit is the value representing the unit of the measure. It could be in count, seconds, etc. Resolution is the value representing the storage resolution of this metric. We will learn more about this later in this video. Now here's also a good representation of these key terminologies in this documentation. I will put a link in the descriptions below. Now let's switch over to Visual Studio and see how you can easily get started using this PowerTools metrics library. Switch over to Visual Studio where I have an existing solution open, which I have been using for my Lambda PowerTools library videos. If you're new, I have already covered the logging and the tracing libraries in previous videos, which will be also linked in the descriptions below. Now for this video, I have created a new project, Lambda Power Tools Metrics, which has the function.cs and also the startup.cs. Now this is using the Lambda Annotations Framework to set up this function code. Now, if you're completely new to the Annotations Framework, I highly recommend checking out my video linked here and in the descriptions below. Now at a high level, it uses the Lambda function attribute and also has the HTTP API attribute to indicate that this is an API endpoint. Now in this function, I get the CD name from the path parameter and use that to hit the DynamoDB database and get the data from weather forecast table. The DynamoDB context is dependency injected into the function constructor and is set up in the startup.cs class as a dependency injected service in the service collection. All of this is part of the annotations framework. Now let's see how we can get started using the metrics class by adding a few metrics inside our get weather endpoint. Now to get started, I'll need to add a new get package for the power tools metrics library. So let's right click and say manage new get packages. Let's go to browse and let's search for power tools metrics. So let's add the AWS Lambda power tools dot metrics package into this project. The installation is complete. So let's come back to our functions.cs class. Now to get started using the metrics, all we need to do is to attribute this function. This is very similar to the other way that we've used the annotations package. So let's specify the metrics attribute, which is coming from the Lambda Power Tools metrics package that we just installed. So let's make sure to include the appropriate usings and let's open this to specify a few properties. Now in this case, we can specify the namespace, which is very similar to your application or project. So let's say this project is named as weather stats, which has various different services like this across our AWS resources. So all of these services is going to use the same namespace so that it will be grouped under one big container, which is weather stats. Let's also specify a service name, which is going to be written as a dimension on this particular metric. Let's give this service name as weather service, which is the dimension in which I want this particular metric to be grouped under. 
There are also a few other properties on this attribute. So if we navigate into this attribute class, you can see there is a namespace, the servers. There's other properties like capture cold start, which will capture cold start related metrics to CloudWatch. You can also use the race on empty metrics to raise validation errors if there are no metrics getting logged inside this function code. For now, we will just leave these two properties and let's write our first metric statement. So let's say we need to know how many times that we are calling this get weather endpoint. Now, based on your application needs and the domain, the metrics will be different what you will be tracking. Now it could be very similar to number of orders placed or customers created or users logged in, etc. Now this depends on the domain and also on the application that you're building. For now, let's simply see how we can track metrics. So let's use the metrics class from the namespace and let's say add metric. Now using this function, we can add a new metric. Now, as you expect, you need to specify a metric name. So let's specify the metric name as get weather. And let's specify the value as one, because in this case, we're going to increment it by one. Now you can also specify a metric unit. In this case, it is going to be count. But you can see there are other values that you can specify like bits, bits per second, bytes, gigabits, kilobits, etc. You can look at the different values and what they mean on the metric unit class. So for now, let's specify as count. Now we have successfully written a new metric of get weather as soon as this application endpoint is going to run. Now let's build this, deploy this and see this in action. Now with the Lambda annotations framework, it comes with the serverless.template file, which has the resources that this application requires. Now it automatically generates the cloud formation template for the Lambda function. However, I added in an explicit role for this Lambda function so that it can talk to the DynamoDB table weather forecast. So I have given it all the access required to talk to this DynamoDB. I have also given access to write to CloudWatch and also to X-Ray. Now this particular role name is getting applied on this function using the role attribute and using the at and the specified name in the template file. So once we have all this set up, let me right click publish to AWS Lambda. This prompts up a dialog box. So let's specify a stack name we need to use. So let's specify weather stats and let's publish this. Now this is going to build and create a package, upload this to an S3 bucket and deploy it using the template file to the AWS services. Now it's completed the upload space to the S3 and now it's deploying using the serverless template file and creating the various resources that we specified in the template file. The deployment is complete and we also get the serverless URL for this endpoint. So let's copy this. Let's go into the AWS console. And if you further navigate into the Lambda functions, you can see this new function. So you can see there is a new function created here. So let's navigate to the URL that we copied and let's specify Brisbane as the city name and let's execute this. Now this hits the API Lambda endpoint and it retrieves the data from DynamoDB and shows this in here. Now, if I make another call for Sydney, that is also going to come back here. Now, if I come back to the Lambda function and let's go to the monitor tab and let's go to view CloudWatch logs. Now in here, we have a new log stream record. So let's navigate into that. And here you can see the CloudWatch metrics data. Now you can see here, there is this first record written for the get weather count metric, and it has the value of get weather one. Now this is the one that we wrote for Brisbane and there is one more record for Sydney, which you can find here, which also increments the value by one. To visualize this in a graph format, we can go to the metrics and go to the all metrics tab. So let's navigate to that. Here you have the different namespaces that we have created. So you can see here, I have a few custom namespaces and you can also see the default AWS namespaces. Now these are the metrics data that's written by the resources by default and the custom namespaces are the application specific ones. In this case, let's navigate to weather stats, which is the one that we just created. And here we have the service level grouping, which shows the data for weather servers and it shows the metric get weather. In the metrics data, each combination of the dimensions that we've added is shown as a different metric value. So you can see here, in this case, we have the weather servers and the get weather dimension as one value. So if we select that, you can see the values here in this graph. 
Now in this case, it is shown as a line. Now if you want to show this as a simple number, you can show that as well. Now if you're using it as a line and if we make multiple requests, you can see the line coming in the graph. So I'm just pressing F5. Let's also change the CD names, but that's not affecting any of our metric at this point. But let's make different calls to this endpoint. Now, once we have made these multiple requests, let's switch back to metrics and let's refresh this. And you can see here still one value, which has the whole value for this particular period. Now this is grouping this data at a five minutes period. So let's change this to be at one second. Now you can also play around with the statistics and use average or minimum and different values that's given here. So in this case, let's choose sum, which shows the sum of all the requests in this particular period. Now you can see that this data is getting graphed inside here visually. Now instead of line, you can also show this as a number, which shows the total count of values that we have invoked during that period. Now we have successfully written a simple metric to the AWS console and viewed it in the metrics visualization. Now when publishing custom metrics, you can specify the resolution. The CloudWatch supports two formats of resolution. One is the standard resolution, which is the default, which has the data of one minute granularity. However, if you want higher level granularity, that is of one second, you can use high resolution. So to specify resolution using the metrics library, all we need to do is pass an extra parameter. So if we navigate back to code, let's go into the functions.cs. And here we can add in an extras parameter, which is the metric resolution and specify high in this particular case. Now we saw how adding the service by default added a dimension to this particular metric. Now we can also add other dimensions for this metric. Let's say we want to group this by the city name that this is getting called. We can do that as well. So let's add a new dimension for this particular metrics. So let's say metrics dot add dimension and let's specify a dimension name. In this case, it's going to be CD name. And let's also specify the value, which is going to be the CD name that's coming in here. We might also want to add default dimension across all the metrics that's getting logged by the Lambda functions. Now, this could be examples like to identify the environment in which this Lambda function is running. So let's say if we want to track the environment, we can do that as well using the dimensions. So in the data coming from the different environments like prod, dev, test can be grouped and seen differently. To do that, let's create a default set of dimensions. So let's specify a private dictionary of string, string values and create a new dictionary object. So let's specify this as default dimensions. Let's create a new dictionary and let's also specify some inline values in this case. So let's specify environment. Now in this case, let's assume this is the production environment, which can also come from the parameters in Lambda. So once we have created this default dimensions, we can pass it into the metrics library. So we can specify metrics dot set default dimensions and pass in a list of values. So let's pass in the default dimensions as the values here. We can also add dimensions conditionally inside code. So let's say if the results.count is greater than a certain value, we need to add a different dimension. So let's specify results.count is greater than 10. In this case, we can create a new dimension. So let's specify metrics, add dimension, pass in the key as high, and let's specify the name as the city name again. So in this case, we will know that these are the cities with the high amount of values. So let's build this and see all of this in action. So let's right click and deploy this again to Lambda. And let's see how this has affected our dimensions view in AWS console. The deployment is complete. So let's switch back to the console. Let's close this. Let's make a new request for Brisbane. So let's refresh this request. Let's also make additional request to Sydney. And let's also say London, which is going to return results that's less than 10. This is not going to get the high metric for that particular flow. So now let's switch back to the metrics. Let's go into the browse. Let's go to all and we can see the weather stats again here. Now here you can see more dimensions inside this particular namespace. So we can see the city name. So if I navigate into that, you can see there's Brisbane, London and Sydney, and you can see all these values in here. So if I navigate back to weather stats again, you can see the environment, which is going to be prod in this particular case. However, if you have this in different environments, you will be also able to see the values for that. Now, as you can expect for the height, we only get the values for Brisbane and Sydney because London is not in height. 
Now, these are just examples on how you can show different metrics and how you can use them to visualize different values and things that you will need in your application. So let's say now I want to see all the requests coming into this environment for this get weather. I can simply tick this and you can see that count coming up here. Now you can also see that the different metrics that we have chosen are color coded differently. So if I choose more metrics, so let's go into weather stats, let's go into high and select Brisbane and that's going to be represented as a different color. Now if I switch back to the CloudWatch logs, let's navigate to view CloudWatch logs for that Lambda function. And if we go to the latest log stream, we can see the cloud metrics that's written for that. So if I expand one of these, you can see that this one has different metrics than the first one we saw. So you can see the get weather count and the storage resolution is one, which indicates high. And you can also see the different dimensions that we have added, which are service, environment, city name, and also high. The appropriate values for each of these is logged down below here. Now, if you want to add custom metadata into this logs, you can do that too. So if I come back to the solution, let's go to the functions.cs. Let's say we want to see the count as part of this metrics data even though we don't want to visualize that. So let's open bracket this. Let's create a new metadata in this case. So let's say metrics.add metadata and let's specify the metadata of results count. So let's say results count and let's pass in the value, which is going to be results.count. So let's build this and deploy this and see this in action. The deployment is complete. So let's switch back. Let's navigate to the endpoint. Let's make a request to the Brisbane endpoint. Let's also make a call to London and one to Sydney as well. So let's switch back to the CloudWatch logs. Let's go to the latest log stream record and you can see the information in here. So now in this case, since this was for Brisbane, you can see that there is a property result count, which says 57 records were returned. Let's go to the second record, which is for London. And in this case, we don't have the results count because it is less than 10. And for the Sydney one, we have the value in here, which is going to be 27 because there were 27 results returned. Now these metadata cannot be visualized inside the graph. However, you can use it along with your logs and we see it inside this in context of your metrics data. I hope this helps you to get started using the Power Tools metrics library and use it from your Lambda functions. We saw how easy it is to get started to add a metric and also to visualize this inside your CloudWatch console. There are different ways that you can visualize this, but this highly depends on your application and the domain and the problem that you're trying to solve. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.